I also kind of ran away from home and got married right. at 20. I have to give Amrita, my ex-wife, credit for being the only person really that taught me to take all this seriously. People think you're privileged and talk about nepotism. You have to have a certain amount of success to survive. Well, I've never been in that position to kind of fiddle on the edit table. Except once I, I cut Kunal Khemu's scene. He got, <laughs> because you can see it, no? He got really upset. I didn't like the second season as much as I liked the first. We lost the plot point with the guru, you know. Became a bit esoteric and slow, I think. When Me Too happened, I don't think I've heard a word from you. We are aware that there are certain powerful people in a strata which cannot be touched mm. in this country. Hello and welcome to Sit with Hitlist, our award-winning absolutely unscripted podcast come print series. This is a show that we do uh, out of the midday office in Bandra East. Uh, this is the first time we moved out of that studio because when the Nawab summons, you show up. I thought you were going to say this is an award-winning actor. <laughs> from, I was like, thank you, thank you. And this is an award-winning hey, show. I was like, sorry, okay, fair <laughs> enough. Okay, which is really almost a, I was going to say, gali in today's political climate, isn't it? No, well, no. I mean, here's the thing, no, though. No, but sweet, I, mean, I know with, you didn't with mean that, it. With that uh, epithet, uh, which is totally, you know, it goes in line with, with the family you belong to. Uh, what I think a lot of people tend to forget is, while you're Nawab and all those things, in terms of lineage, you're actually an extremely self-made person. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, we can carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, but right. you know, narratives suit, I've learned this, they just, you can't argue against them, whether they're true or not, you can go blue. People have a certain fixed notion. Right. You know, because that's the, that's the part of your life that I really want to talk about okay. uh, because it's seldom spoken of in the sense that you were a 20-year-old kid who showed up in Bombay yes. living on your own. I don't think you took money from your parents. No. You, you're absolutely self-made in that sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, even for, for that matter, Patodi, I mean, when my father died, it was rented to the Nimrana uh, group of hotels. Okay. So uh, Aman and Francis used to run that. Yes. And Francis yes. passed away now, poor fellow. So he said, you know, if you ever want it back, um, let me know. And I said, I, I want it back. <laughs> so they had a conference and said, okay, you have to give us lots of money, right. which I then consequently earned and kind of, so even the so house I'm supposedly inherited oh, wow. has been earned back through right. money from films. And from I mean, you movies. can't live on, on the past. Right. At least we can't in our family. I mean, because right. there, there was nothing. There's, there's some history and culture and some beautiful photographs mm -hmm. and of course some land and it's been a privileged upbringing. But um, and, uh, there's been no um, uh, like a inheritance. Coming, coming from there's there. no inheritance Never coming been. from there. Never been. So when you, when you moved to Bombay, Sef, uh, you were not from the city. Uh, you uh, actually yeah. lived in a house that you rented? Is that, is that how it worked? Well, I was born here and I was yes. familiar with Bombay. Then we lived in Bhopal and Patodi and Delhi. Where did you grow up in Bombay? Carmichael in Road? In Carmichael Road, Road okay. yeah. Because uh, my mother, I think, was keen and, and being married to my father, the different worlds, you know. So it wasn't a very film-centric kind of um, upbringing. And South Bombay anyway. And South Bombay, whatever, um, in Cathedral and Bombay Gym. That's because also my father's world and, and that influence, which I think she was quite happy to be a part of, away from, um, you know, the constant pressure of being uh, in a film environment. Right. So a little break in life. Right. So I think one has inherited that. So you then, of course, were in Delhi and then that's where you moved to Bombay from. Um, Would that be correct to say after you finished? Well, my father, you know, uh, was living with my mother uh, in her, her flat okay. um, in, in Rashmi. And uh, he had just finished kind of playing cricket when I was four or five was his last test series. So he, my mother says, was bunking his responsibilities as they were in Bhopal, Patodi, because his mother was looking after things. Right. And she got a bit old. Um, we moved to Delhi to kind of live with her. Right. Um, with your grandma? With my grandmother in, you know, a nice big old house in Delhi where, um, which she had been given for her lifetime mm -hmm. um, in return for land and property and all those kind of deals that these old families had made with the Indian government. Right. 71. Uh, 71, right. exactly. So that's why we moved to Delhi. And it was great living in Delhi. We had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think that was the generation of these Designers like Rohit Bal, Rohit Khosla, you know, Ashish Soni and these people were among the first people I'd come across who were doing something off the beaten track in terms of art and culture, right. um, which might have somewhere planted a seed of, you know, why not go and act in films or try and do that because the whole force was to be a 
doctor you did, you or lawyer. You started with an ad anyway, right? Yeah, my father sent me to an ad agency hmm. um, to get a job. And he, he thought it would be character forming because I was partying a lot. Okay. And not doing much. Where were and you partying in Delhi? In, in Gungru, you know, right. with everyone. Right, it was right. fantastic. At, yeah. at a great time. Uh, and he said, you know, it's not working for me. You, so he used to send me in a bus uh, to some Sundar Nagar in Delhi. And we were working for this agency. And, this, and I think one of the jobs we had was making religious calendars for the Birlas. So the only creative thing was, should we put Lord Vishnu in October <laughs> or should, you know, let's put him in November. <laughs> so I kind of lost interest with that quite soon. Um, yeah, but. <laughs> and then Gwalior happened? Is that, is that what the Gwalior story is? shootings, I mean, I, my father again had a thing. Um, they were shoot, my parents were shooting this ad together and he said, they, I think they'd asked him, is your son interested? So he had this plan. He said, at seven o'clock this evening, I want you to first have a bath, comb your hair and just stick your head into the living room and come and say hello to me at mm. 7. Huh. That was his whole plan, which I did. And the producer was sitting there. Right. So I think the idea was like, oh, you know, your son and Woody, that kind of thing. Um, and I got it. But you know, honestly, I think the way my upbringing was or the kind of life I had or the lack of some kind of genuine confidence or something, something, something. I, I wasn't a very good um, cinematic figure, <laughs> you know, in terms of either to shoot in photographs. I think I was very effeminate and very kind of coy and shy and kind of uh, unsure, which is, you know, precisely the worst qualities you could have for a... For a leading man as a Yeah, as an actor right. in, in Bombay. Mm. Uh, but not bad for a kind of a you know, Western academic schoolboy. Sure. You know, that there was a different culture altogether. So, some quick learning was required. And then you moved to Bombay. Uh, I'm presuming you rent an apartment or did you go to yes. Carmichael no, Road? No, I tried staying in Carmichael Road, right. but it was uh, really lonely and empty and okay. uh, kind of, I didn't know anybody around and I found it very difficult to run this house on my own and mm -hmm. kind of feel okay there. And my mum used to come and spend time with me and then so, where did you first move? We rented, uh, rented a place in Lokanwala called Red Rose, one building, um, a small flat and we had cane furniture and the producer's uh, daughter very kindly did up the place for me um, until one night when I came back from uh, dinner, let's say, with friends and um, I couldn't open the bedroom door because she had locked it and um, she had gone to sleep on the bed. I think she had a plan. And I was peeping, there was a big gap between the door and the carpet. So I was peeping under there, I could see her and she was a large lady. So it was like a, a whale on my bed. <laughs> and I thought, I'm not going in there. I'm not going in there. <laughs> so we went out again. <laughs> Why would she do that? She wanted you out? Huh? She wanted you out or she wanted you in? She was my interior designer. Right. She was doing the furniture. Right. And she locked the bedroom door and she went to sleep, thinking I'll have to knock and I don't know what the plan was, maybe, I, I don't know what it was. She should have left it open at least, I would have thought, I don't know. Anyway. So that's, that's when you begin your career, pretty much by yourself. And it's, from whatever I've read, it's a disastrous start. It's a disastrous start. So is there a person who brought you here? If, uh, yeah, Anand Mahindru, who was doing television, came okay. to Delhi. That's when, so there was all this thing of school. I went to a really academic school. Um, really like Eton and Winchester and you're supposed to go to Oxford and and I learned a lot of respect for you know this Winchester is where you the went academic to. world Winchester is where I was. Is that the school that sends uh, the ball boys for Wimbledon? No. Would it be the same school? No I don't think oh, it's so. Not true. Okay. No it must be okay. some other school right. but uh, this is like the oldest school in England is 1300 or something it was founded in and it's really kind of like ancient and, and the respect for academics and books and everything uh, you know it's, it's on another level. And the idea is obviously it's not a cheap school that you go to Oxford or you go to you know wherever. Um, so that hadn't worked out. So I was in a little black books of my parents who were like you know this guy's and then Delhi and you know and partying and Gungru and they were like you know and I was really actually getting scared because there was nothing I was interested in mm. and maybe that was the product of a privileged upbringing. But I said I don't want to sit behind a desk and I'll I. I Genuinely, I'm not interested. I don't know what to do. And then when Anand Mahindru, after this Gowali shootings ad said, 
you know, a film, suddenly some bells started going off, maybe something genetic in the blood or I don't know. Um, I suddenly thought the idea is so exciting of moving to Bombay. I remember having that shower in Delhi and we had an old house with like funny water and I don't know. You know um, didn't work half the time. We had to <laughs> fiddle with it forever to get it right. They get too cold and then too hot. We're digressing. We're <laughs> yeah, digressing. Sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry. All right. You said make it anecdotal. Yeah. Okay, but not to this point. <laughs> Chipkali is on the ceiling. Yeah. And okay. then I called PWD. Yeah, PWD yeah. yeah. And then I did. said, okay, stop. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> right. Um, so where was I? I was having the shah right. and I said, uh, I was so excited that I had a idea for a, you know, a kind of a life I could see, coming to Bombay, struggling, getting into this rented little flat and working. And the idea of working in films at that moment just meant meeting different people and working odd hours and just collaborating on, on whatever, just something really exciting. And it's the only job that from 18, when I started considering it seriously, um, I've always been fascinated and passionate about because I had this really dangerous trait of losing interest in things after a while which is something I think everyone worries about their kid having right. that after a while you just lose interest. Were you not a movie buff though? Yeah but a western movie buff. Sure. I used to watch some Hindi films and then Amitabh Bachchan movies I, I liked and um, I found them very over emotional when I was young also because my mother was an actor and then when I see her crying on screen, it's not something I enjoyed. Mm. So I'd say, I don't want to watch this. So, and Hindi films at that point in the 70s and it were overly yeah, okay. emotional. There's always, you know, a mother crying there. So, so I thought, <laughs> I, I don't want to watch this. <laughs> right, so then you, you, you move to Bombay because Anand Mahindru uh, comes up and... Yeah, offers, offers me you know, this film. movie yeah. and then comes to the Gungru hmm. and I tell all my friends, I said, hey guys, this is a director and I'm going to bomb director, right? And he had a couple of vodkas, I shouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's okay>. threw <laughs> up. <laughs> why did he throw up? I, he, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know why he, he threw up. But he threw, so these same guys came and said, bro, your director friend's in the bathroom. <laughs> He's not feeling so good. I was like, uh, no. And then, so I should have realized we we're in a bit of trouble. But we came to Bombay and Sati Shori was the producer. And then somebody told me a story about her that she had run out of money while making Farishte with Vinod Khanna. And there was this ambitious large film. These panthers were chasing him in the shot. And then they ran out of money or something. And when he comes around the corner, there's they said, no panthers because we need money. So she said something. She said, OK, get some dogs and paint them black. So these panthers become. So that was my no, producer. No, this is apocryphal. Is that? No, it's, well, it's apparently it's there. If you see Farishta is made, it's all sure, there. Sure. So there's a so panther is actually a dog. In no, the, the panther, panther becomes the, the dog, it starts off, you know. Okay, it becomes it, a dog. Yeah, right. because... The, right. yeah. So this is... This was that's, that's the story about your first producer. Yes, yes. And, and then, you know, there were other things as well. Where I used to pay me a uh, thousand rupees a week and I'd have to kiss her ten times on the cheek. Okay. So, so there was that. And anyway, they had a fight. Okay. Because she the, was quite the tough. The producer. Yeah, she was also quite scary and as some industry women can be, you know. So she had a fight with the director and I got saved <laughs> because the film got shelved. Right. So that is where the disaster started. Then Raul Ravel cast me in his That's film. That's disaster too, isn't That's it? That's disaster too. He, uh, Kamal Sadhana was in the movie, so he threw out Kamal Sadhana and took me right. for no fault of Kamal's and then found that I'm much worse and then threw me out and took him. And then Kamal and I became friends <laughs> because we just thought it's absurd what's happening with us. So that was that. Um, like, you know, there was the whole like stardust kind of news back then that you showed up drunk on the set, yeah. that you slept on the set. You know, you, are, you know your history and your, you've done your research. <laughs> yeah, but that's not true. I okay. mean, nobody turns up drunk on a set. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't. I never did. But I was a little Western and kind of, you know, I wasn't doing that thing of, yes, sir, I'll sit around here all day sure. when we're not shooting. I didn't toe the line, as it were. And so that didn't last very long. And also, I wasn't, I, you know, I wasn't very good. Um, and the, there must have been some attitude problem which I myself wasn't seeing. You thought you were better than the world that no, you no, sort no. of survey? No, no, okay. I, I was just like having a good time and I was quite down to earth and right. I thought a friendly person and a kind of sure. very humble kind of right. fun person. Right. I just didn't understand how serious things are. Right. That's all, you know, right. it was never that I'm, I never thought I was, uh, even though a lot of people going to the schools. Could have perceived it that way. Maybe, but people growing up in cocoons and having their own ideas, it's very easy unless you have a 
broad horizon to kind of walk also around. You're 20. I mean, and a lot of the 20 year olds are young. It's young, and also you, you know, whatever you've seen in life and the kind of things you've experienced, you you might um, come across as a little cocky, right. you know, because you think it's funny. Right. But it's it's not. And so this is like the early 90s. Uh, Bombay was a great place yeah. to live in. Yeah. Wait, did you continue the Guru scene here? Like well, a little bit. Places to go a to? little bit. A little bit, you know. And um, did you make friends easily here? I made. I had. Yeah, me and the producers now. Some of these guys in LA, Dilip Singh Rathore and I used to do acting class together. Okay. Um, and we were sitting in a we were sitting in an acting class with this guy, and he said, um, "You know, why don't you take off your shirts?" So we looked at each other and, and we said, no man, we're not, not really comfortable with that, dude. And then another guy came in and he was, and this guy told him, he said, do some push-ups. So he started doing push-ups and we were saying, what's going on? And then he said, no, you take off your shirt. So he took off his shirt and the guy's going, nice, nice. And I thought, what? Yeah, like what? <laughs> so with all the things that have been happening recently, it's really good because this crap's been going on forever. But luckily we were like, no. Right. But that poor dude was taking off his shirt. So many things were. Sure, sure. It was a different. And of course, you made your debut with with Yash Chopra, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But that would be the first film that came out, or was was. You yeah, know, actually, I have to I have to say something, even though I, you know, it's a personal thing. I I'm, I don't want to dwell too much on it, but um, I also kind of ran away from home and got married right. at 20, which right. you know, um, and I have to give Amrita. Um, my ex-wife credit for being the only person really that taught me to take all this seriously. Mm. Uh, it was at that point mm. where I was told and taught that I don't know what you're doing, mm. but this kind of stuff Did needs you focus. Yeah, yeah, like you know, you can't be laughing and joking. And mm. I remember the analogy actually. It says you can't hit a target if you're laughing at it. Right. So I was like, oh, okay. So things like that. Um, and it was at that time that Parampara happened and Yash Chopra ji called and said, you know, I'm looking for a fourth lead or something, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I was like, great, <laughs> yeah, anything. <laughs> so I did it. Um, and when he signed me, um, a lot of other people. That's how it usually works. Right? Yeah. It's notices. like an investment in a right. stock. You say, right. okay, now if Yash Chopra and Parampara is taking him, right. then you know, it's going to be, let's, let's invest in this. Right. And that's what happened. But the basic journey um, of taking things seriously started there. And then it was a question of kind of mentally burning bridges mm. and saying, this is it, you know, there's just nothing else. And that's somehow the only way to kind of make it in movies is right. not to be open to, I mean, any kind of distraction or the possibility that Let's try this. Let's do something else. No, it was like this has to work because there's there's nothing else. That kind of focus right. is what I felt was required, sure. and what was taught to me, and I kind of inculcated. But you know, like um, there is an interview I saw of yours. You know, there's a lot of stuff on the internet that I think people should really look up. Like, you know, these uh, videos. You know, back in the day, they used to shoot videos uh, with movie yeah. stars. They'd come on the set and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, and there are quite a few of them uh, of yours <laughs> from back then. Have you? Can I? Can you send me some? I'll, I'll send you. Oh I'll send man. you. It's all, it's all there in my uh, folder now. So you know, I see you, and I see you. I see you from from that. And I see you. They're two different people. I think so. They're genuinely two different yeah, people. Yeah, and you've yeah. said this in the past yeah. in your previous interviews too that you don't, I don't remember. It's, it's not the same like person. You genuinely don't remember. I there was genuinely, person. I can't. I. I sometimes find myself doing the same stuff and I'm like, oh, maybe I haven't changed. Right. But I really feel slowly, slowly and cliche things like reading mm. and learning and being open and being really focused because of that disdain mm. and irresponsible attitude I had to all the culture I was given when I was a kid. Mm. That academic environment of Winchester College is, mm. I mean, it's like ha haloed ground, you know, somehow. Mm. Like, it's like, I can't explain um, the, the respect for for academics there right. and also what it makes out of your mind to be humble down to a don't show off understated right. quiet all those things suddenly came flooding back later when when 
you know, because you're trying to pretend, you're trying to fit in, you're trying to like, you know, give galis and drink Bacardi and be one of the boys in the 90s, you know. Right. Um, but now, when you say, okay, do I want to really be known like that all along or mm. do I, can I be comfortable to express? Thing? Of course, it's an age thing right. also. Um, but it's an exposure thing and it's all the things that, you know, your dad and mom told you, which is there somewhere, but it's you're like, yeah, that. whatever. And suddenly it comes right. Right. Um, back and, and before you know it, you do change mm. and, and you're just seeing things differently and uh, I've read about people like that also and their characters also that I've read in plays where you know you're a bit rebellious earlier and then you kind of embrace everything that sure. you were rebelling against. Right. I mean but I, as a person uh, uh, and I'm sure everyone's told you this uh, and I'm here I'm talking about films not your later interviews but there is a duality in the sense that there is what who you are does not like it does not relate to what you do for a living mm. and that seemed to be a lot of your 90s works yes would that be correct to say yeah for sure because who i was um i mean you have to fit into a certain mold in the 90s you know there wasn't that much room for experimentation or bringing your i mean i remember amir khan who's always been the kind of at least for me the flag bearer of, of some sort of discipline and modernity and uh, efficiency in the industry um, behind the scenes as much as, mm. as on, uh, said, okay, I'm going to do five films a year. Mm. Five films a year. Right. And the logic was you can't do more than five. Mm. So, and this is the time when people are doing 15 films, right. you know. Shakti Kapoor said he's insecure if he doesn't have 17 films on the floors. <laughs> At the same time. Yeah. That's nuts. So that was the right. climate. Right. Um, and also the kind of films, we were, whatever we were in the 90s coming, we still that. Mr. Bachchan's influence and, and the, there was a different kind of movie till, till kind of Dil Chata came along. But, I, but you I, had I, some big hits back I then. I mean, there's always like something that uh, it's a really, I mean, people think you're privileged and uh, uh, talk about nepotism and, you know, I don't know how I got stuck into that because, no, <laughs> <my> <laughs> thing, you know, but you won't survive really. I mean, of course, you get breaks and, and privileges, but um, it's a really organic kind of industry. I mean, you end up exactly where you distill off at, like crude oil, I remember in geography we studied, you know. Your school lessons are all coming back to you. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like di it distills at different temperatures, no? Right, so, I right. mean, people find their, um, their, own, level, their, their own level and, right. it, and you have to have a certain amount of, you know, success to survive. Um, and there was, so a couple of films didn't work, Parampara, the great Yash right. Ji film didn't work. Mm -hmm. There's a story behind that briefly that he had just made Lamhe mm. and it was before its time and that didn't run. Right. So he said, okay, I'm going to make a really safe film. Like a multi-starer. Yeah, well. Like as dull as, right, I mean, right. not dull, but as safe sure. as you can get. And then that didn't, you know, didn't work. Yeah. He, did, he directed it for somebody else. There wasn't his right. own company. So Parampara didn't work. Right. And then, you know, I worked in this Pehchan, a um, couple of other movies. And then Ye Dil Lagi hmm. um, Which was, was a smaller film, film. Right. Was a third film. Right. And the like Amir who did Parampara was offered Dar mm. and I was like the fourth lead so I was offered Ye yeah. Dil Lagi right. which Akshay Kumar was also in yeah. so um, and the music was great and my role was really fun and I kind of scored something there. But you know did it ever occur to you that you're not the Ole Ole guy you're not this you're not this person in terms of how you've been raised in terms of how you think or you could just like demarcate a set from home. Of course. Like, this is what you no, do. No, in, and then in, in fact you, the merge is happening now which should happen which is a sign of right. some civilization right. whereas earlier it was totally a very different thing in fact it was cool not to talk about your work at home mm. probably still is actually but um, there was a huge differentiation because this is what we do as, right. as a living. So nothing to do with what you are. And the minute we're on the set, we're all equal hmm. and we're just part of this thing and it doesn't matter what. And it's made for an audience that made. you are not. Yeah, that you're you not. certainly are. Of course not. Like, you know, we're all, we're all 90s kids and I was just going through some of your films. I just want to read them out to you one by one. I've not even heard of any one of them. Yeah, okay. Yaar, Yaar Gaddar, yeah. uh, Dil Tera Diwana, Uran, Kimat They Are Back. Hamse Barkar Korn, Suraksha, Aao Pyaar Kare. Do you even remember them yourself? Every single one. All of them? Yeah, I remember being... But did you walk through, like sleepwalk through these Not parts? Not sleepwalk, or? but I, I don't think that, and that's entirely my fault. I didn't connect completely. I mean, they, they all, a lot of these films had some, perhaps not these ones, but in that time had great music. Okay. So that kind of helped survive also, right. which I was just thinking about it the other day. Um, 
so the music helped. So it was more the music industry than a movie industry. In kind of, of, it was both. Yeah. And then they started becoming producers. But audio was really strong. You could right. be an audio hero. Right. And I think I kind of was. Like right. I was okay doing, I was quite presentable doing a lot of songs. And I had very good music. Mm. So I think that helped a lot. But that business of understanding how to act mm. uh, has been very recent. Really? I, has been, yes, of, of, of like, okay, that this is what, apart from, I mean, earlier, you know, and a big star also said, I mean, what is acting? I mean, you just have to say your lines in a sincere fashion. Which is how it kind and of was the for the longest time. What? And mind the furniture. Right? <laughs> and then say your yeah. lines and mind the furniture. Right. Yeah. yeah. But that's, and that's changed so much. But that's only recently that I've kind of been reading about it and applying what I've read and been given the opportunity to... Sure. To sure. kind of I mean, everyone says this, and I'm sure you'll agree that Dil Chata was a turning point in terms of the style of acting, the kind of cinema, the way it's written, the, the way, way written. and also behind the scenes and right. the kind of clothes we were wearing right. and the kind of haircuts we the had. The fact that you had a haircut, like, was a yeah. big deal, right? And with gel, yeah, and all that, which yeah. people said, you know, that's really dangerous. You're going to look like a, you know, some dude from Bandra. You're not looking like a, you know, hero. Like the audience. Yeah, you're not yeah. looking like what you should look like. Right. Was that a big deal? Because I remember seeing uh, a, you know, a behind the scenes video of uh, Dil Chata Hai, where you guys are getting a haircut and everyone's really scared because a movie star is known by the haircut. I mean, this is a Sanjay Dutt haircut, this is a Shah Rukh Khan haircut, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm presuming this is Lovely. a Saif Ali Khan haircut. Yes. The fact that you're getting a haircut is a very big deal yeah. uh, in 2001. But also what, what happened was, I remember talking to uh, somebody about this, Arbaz Khan actually said, mm. uh, you know, you should get, a, I just had a hit film mm. and had really long hair, yeh dil lagi. He said, what you should do is get a haircut. Mm. And I thought, what, that's like, that doesn't make any sense. Right. And of course, I mean, it was good advice. But uh, also, it was a very superstitious culture at that mm. point. We probably still are. Right. But people said, if something is working, don't change anything, you know, don't change anything. Not even the role. <laughs> Not, even the <laughs> Not even the movie. Just keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But was that a turning point for you in a, in a personal sort of way, um, in the way you thought about movies? I mean, did you stumble upon it or would you have continued being the 90s actor uh, for longer if Dil Chata had Well, I mean, if you think, if you analyze it, I would have to say it's Farhan and Amir Khan's kind of, is people like that, right. that were affecting change in the industry. And I benefited from it because right. it suited me what was being suggested. Right. Um, but I remember Amir having a chat with me and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the film because I said, you know, again, this is some third lead and, you know, you got, I'm playing hero and he said, which film are you playing hero in? I said, this one and that one. He's like, okay, this film is about three times the size of all of those put together. Okay, you know, right. can you get on the page because this is good cinema. You have to do it, he said. Right. <laughs> so I said, okay. Um, and uh, it, was a, it was something that, you know, like I didn't really, I mean, I just did it the best I could and I was quite immature while doing it and everyone on set including Amir said you know why don't you play it a different way and you should and I used to get confused mm. I came home and I spoke to my ex-wife about it and I said and she said why are you asking other actors how to play your role because mm. obviously they'll tell you <laughs> you know and, and they'll tell you what you're doing is is wrong so I said okay you know there's obviously a, it's called a galaxy of stars because there's various ways of doing it so I'm just going to do it my way mm. and I went back and I said, okay, this is, and when it worked and people really liked that character. Um, they love that character, totally. So I think that gave me a lot of confidence that, okay, you know, I kind of have a connection to what I think is the way to do things and what the audience likes. So that was a great source of confidence where I said, okay, you know, and, th and that was then, yeah, Dilligi also, I used to make up some funny lines, mm. <laughs> one or two. Like what? I can't remember, there was, there was some silly scenes and I said, can I just say this? And I. And the director would say, okay, and then I'd watch it in the theater and, uh, and people would laugh. Mm. And I thought, okay, you know, I'm onto something. <laughs> so, yeah, whatever. But speaking of leads, uh, Seth, mm. I don't think you've ever had a problem being in an ensemble cast film, even through, through, through the, the 90s decade, as it were, like you were the fifth, like with the fourth Khan, as it were. In the sense of like, I don't know, like a fifth Beatle. <laughs> you would be, you would be, with, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You would be with Akshay or you yeah, would be with... Uh, yeah. um, See, at one point, it was just a question of survival. It depends what your standards are. Right. When I started out, it was a question of survival. Right. You know, and just Paycheck. being accepted hmm. and just getting a job. Right. It wasn't like, oh, I want to rule the universe right. or I want to be the, uh, you know. So did, did 
dil chahta hai and subscribe and, and also yeah. it's your cinematic upbringing you know it's like what you've been exposed to in life like everything is upbringing mm. or exposure but for me you know i grew up watching a lot of these world war 2 kind of w uh, ensemble movies right. and i'd say okay dirty dozen and all these things sure. and like the various heroes doing little bits so when loc happened or when something happened or a two hero film like i used to think of um bud spencer and terence hill and these kind of so in my head there's nothing wrong with doing is like, the genre is different yeah so that is mai khiladi yeah, tarari or, yeah. or kachche dhage yes anywhere. but the idea of a buddy movie right uh was also what what india was liking so it kind of it didn't i didn't have an issue so you were going with the flow in, in, in the sense of what the country was loving is what you were doing hoping to get another job right after hoping to get another job but also feeling that in a two hero film i've always been quite happy to compete with the other guy like in my own head at times i thought yeah, i'm the coolest you know right. so i'm like okay you might be like the biggest star but i'm going to give you a run for your money so there's been a competitive kind of streak sure. which at some points but that's only on the set right or does it even come to the edit table i i have never been in that position to kind of fiddle on the edit table except one side i cut kunal khemu scene he got <laughs> because you can say it no he got really upset as well <laughs> and this? i totally understand and then re recently a scene of mine got <laughs> cut and i was like what's happening in go go agon yeah it ah, was okay. really long in right. the second half right and i thought god you know this is second half's a bit of a worry and being the producer i said you want to cut something here let's speed this up and he called me and he said how can you do this and i said oh come on you know it's for the good of the movie <laughs> i feel really bad sorry kunal <laughs> i shouldn't have done it there is a certain confidence that one that one sees right after 2001 to a point that i don't think there is any mainstream bollywood actors attempted an english film which you what you which is what you did in 2006 twice actually twice there after kalakandi kalakandi even finding fanny finding fanny no, being cyrus of being course cyrus. which was much before yeah. uh, those films I mean that's like really making a film for yourself given that that doesn't have a huge audience at least it's but it had more of an audience in those days right and it's not me again look there's all these guys are like homi adjania you know wanted to make this movie right. and he was like ah you know getting him to you have to talk to dinesh vijay about how he got him to direct cocktail or make something commercial because he's basically slightly you know uh at ideal kind of movie would be right. being sarah's finding fanny right and if the offer comes much like lal kaptan mm. and if it you know kind of turns you on so i don't know maybe i've never looked at it like okay this job is going to take me somewhere but it's is the job really interesting and will i enjoy doing it and life goes on around it so sure. we're shooting in panjgani doing being cyrus right. i'm learning something speaking a different language and communicating in english is so different to communicating in hindi so struggling with that a little bit and then you know having dinners with family and friends and drinking whiskey so that, that's f2.0 right in the sense of being now you're cyrus. looking at how you could perhaps this could be f3.0 because maybe being cyrus dil chahta hai was 2.0 right right you know and my no, cloudy was the, one being cyrus 2.0 yeah. yeah right yeah So that's I when guess. you're looking at how you will sort of fit into this new world. So that was the time when things were coming together. Right. You know, so it wasn't just being Cyrus. India, as it were. You were in the right place at the right, right time. Right time, and also looking like the right guy. It was no longer that funny haircut kind of thing. I, was, I understood what's happening. That was the time. You know, I think Omkara and all these films were coming together, right. doing some interesting films. So you're Yashraj. saying you're saying playing a, a character who talks throughout in English. was hard for you because that should come more naturally to you because you would imagine and yeah. it wasn't hard in fact the thing is in acting uh, and this is what's happening today these guys who basically speak hindi mm. are better actors than us mm. because the language is the thing so mm. i mean we're all good at hindi I mean, right. we speak hindi um, but most of the time we don't speak it to each other mm. you know right so, so professional language So it uh, it's I can't tell if I'm lying or not in Hindi as much as I can in English. Because mm. in English suddenly if I say, "Hey, my young, what are you doing?" I'll be like, "What? Wait, no, <laughs> no, 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 it didn't sound right." right. Because I'm so used to speak. I've said I love you in Hindi right. to real women. Yeah. So I know on screen if I say I love you, I'm sounding like an idiot. Whereas in Hindi I've never said "Main tumse pyar karta hu" <laughs> Roma to anybody, you true, know, true. least of all Roma, whoever that is. But whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but what do you think of Roma? It's like a dialogue, you okay, know, just like, like, like a, a film, the character. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to kill you or uh, uh, yeah, like, uh, whatever. Uh. But when films started becoming like you know more 
colloquial. It's supposed to be But again, it's, it's, do, you, do you know what I'm saying? Like, right. So in English, I had a, a sense that it's not sounding natural. Mm. But delivery in English is really different to, mm. and in films. And American is the, is the language of, uh, or English. Mm. English, English. Mm. What? What? Or like, what they do in holy English? man. You know, yeah. that's the way to speak English. You can't say, being Cyrus type and homie with a, you should sound a little Indian. Say, you know, but dad, can I have a, I was like, you know, it's going to sound really bad in English. <laughs> Yeah. But then when you when you do like you know I once spoke to uh, Vishal Bharadwaj like uh, back in the day uh, I think he just made Umkara or it had been uh, like a year or two since Umkara and he was talking about being at your home and I think your kid was hanging around and uh, and, you, and you guys were having conversation and suddenly you turned around and said okay, like you just use that inner real home conversation huh. with, with your child there yeah. and that's when he felt like you've got it like getting Langra Tyagi in terms of that the dialect. But it is, I mean, it is that. I mean, also every script, if you, is quotable to, if you know it backwards, you can apply one line to any aspect of your life. That's really step one in acting is learning the lines. I mean, everyone says, yeah, sure, obviously, but I mean, really learning them and knowing them, and then you can start doing things like how to say them. But, but first, learn them. Comfort is the thing, like practice and repetition. Was it hard for you? Was was it hard for you to get the dialect right? Kind of, but also. Despite perception and projection, I'm not actually English. <laughs> you know, sure. so I've grown up in Haryana and Patodi. Patodi would be. Yeah, so I've yeah. heard it all my life. Right. Oh, mia, ya, tile se baya morlo. I was like, tila ke, peer, peer se, peer se morlo. I was like, what's a peer? Was initially what was happening, but I've always heard it. So I, that again, I can relate uh, and practice and learning it. But I'm, I've always been quite good with. Uh, with dialect and yeah, with, with, speech. with weird accents and kind of in in England I could do Scottish and Irish, you know, it's not South African. And in India, you know, Haryanvi, Punjabi, a little bit you can with a bit of practice. You, you mimic can get as it. well? No, no, I'm terrible mimic. I'm not observant enough, I think. Right. So now uh, we'll get to Sef 3.0, right? Which is when you turn producer. Yeah. And you turn producer with Love Ajkal. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I am that the script that was offered to you was Rockstar. Was that yes, right? that's right. You were going to do Rockstar, you chose Love Ajkal over that. Yeah, yeah. Why would you do that? Rockstar is, is an amazing film. I yeah. mean, you could have done both. No, Not to say that. I don't know. He wanted to do Rockstar with yeah. me and Tiaz. But I just, out of the stories that we'd heard, and I'd just seen Jab We Met, and it was Karina who kind of switched me on to Imtiaz. And when we were talking about what kind of thing, what are the ideas? What are the ideas? So it just sounded a little more commercial. Love Ajkal. Right. And actually not the way he wanted to make it because he had a quite a grim ending in mind and a little dark. In Love Ajkal. In Love Ajkal. Right. Which we had to plead with him. <laughs> and finally, when we were actually on set in London, he said, all right, I've changed my mind. We can have a happy ending. So, you know. Um, Thank God, you saved me money. Kind of. Or, you know, help the film. Right. Because I don't think it would have... Uh, in my humble opinion, um, worked like that. He, if you've seen Love Ajkali, he, his the ending he had in mind was this guy's such a flake who's living in uh, you know America and working in America. By the time he comes home to see her and he realizes he can't live without her, mm. he comes to see her and he sees she's like eight months pregnant. Uh -huh. So he's like, oh damn, and he goes away again. Right. I mean, it made sense. It would, be, it would be subverting the genre in that yeah, sense. Yeah, you don't always get the girl. No. But by which time you'd already become the, the rom-com leading man. I mean, you'd done... Uh, but I remember Adi Chopra video. telling yeah. me that he said, you know, I've got Shah Rukh Khan as like king of the box office, but there's this thing called the multiplex that's coming up and I'm yeah. trying to get a handle on that. Mm. So I think you could be that multiplex hero because you're a little, you know, different. So cast correctly, I think you should hit that kind of genre. So he started doing like Hamtum like and Salam urban, Namaste. The urban uh, multiplex hero. Yeah, which then outgrew the single screen. Absolutely. Right now it's, it's far more multiplex than single screen anyway. But Seth, I mean, if we look at those films, Hamtum included, uh, Salam Namaste of course, and it's very hard. I mean, most people don't realize how tough it is to pull a film like, pull off a film like that because you need an inherent charm. 
uh, to do a role of the, I mean, you were applying yourself completely like you were being it seemed like you were there was a certain character you'd molded yourself on there was a goofiness to it there was a like an endearing quality to it i always felt it seemed very hugh grant uh, yeah I, i mean i've heard karan johar say that as well but i don't know where it came from but um i remember at least hamtum that this is a really difficult film to do because it's just two people talking you know right. it's kind of like modeled not copied but modeled on when harry met sally i mean first of all you have to write sparkling lines and secondly and rani mukherjee made it so much easier by being brilliant um but there were many times when i said to kunal who is directing it kunal kapoor that maybe you shouldn't cut this you know because it's her and me talking and is this really tricky scene where i'm saying oh how would this marriage proposal be and she said okay you know let's play the game and i pretend and you pretend and and then it gets real or kind of thing so i said don't cut it just have it because it's so conversational so things like that would happen and it was hard work to kind of make it so natural that you just feel you're listening to people talking normally but finding something that's holding your attention there but you know there was this whole 90s genre again hollywood genre and that people miss that romantic comedy does not exist in the same way of course in hollywood everything is marvel anyway my wife just told me that genre has changed into badhai ho genre i don't know if, mm. if that's true she's saying it's gone that genre she's saying don't do it <laughs> anymore <laughs> because it's changed it's become it's become more small town in a i don't in know i think she's saying it's become yeah those kind of like kind of thing you know that thing of the dude living in new york and trying to figure out his life and all she's saying it's like a bit passe that's maybe it's changed maybe, maybe. i don't But know there's certainly changed in hollywood we hardly yeah. come across great romcoms anymore I mean people still you know not maybe it's age related also like i'd said once before i don't know if it's true actually not. like confusion and un, being unsure and being a bit of a mess is the hallmark of the kind of romcom hero because right. there's no villain your villain is your own flakiness right which maybe doesn't sit as well you know when you're a bit grown up more supposedly more grown up maybe right. maybe that could be it or maybe she just doesn't want to see me like that <laughs> Go but, up. but we were we were I, I I digress we were on a uh, self 4.0 which is when you're the producer with winning as a producer you took some seriously you took some steps that people would not usually like you went to say a zombie comedy yeah this is even before we made a zombie film in india yeah. you were doing a a take on a zombie film yeah. right um is that again confidence that or, or is this something that you want to watch uh, I mean, and yeah it's huh? it's n- n- not exactly it is i guess i don't know if it's confidence or if it's like i mean it just seems like a really good idea and it seems like it will be entertaining right. and and i don't think i am a a great producer because what i love and what i like might not be everybody's cup of tea and i don't know i can't I, a great producer should be able to tell you okay this is a joke as in this is a four line Mm. amusing little anecdote it's not a film right or oh, this is a film this is a short story this is a book he can like suss out different mediums and within film also he should be able to tell you at what budget that story should be made you know so this is a really nice idea mark but if we can do this in 10 crores it'd be great and take so and so or you know dude what you've got is like a 100 crore movie right let's spend a 100 let's take the top star of the country because this is huge man you right know, so that ability i don't to think i have to read a script and to be able to see that on where it belongs right, right. no 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 not right. to read the script and see it on screen that we all do sure. but to read the script and to realize how to to bracket it yes and in which how much money to make it sure. and who should make it right. and who should act in it right so that uh, and is that something you learned along the way i'm i'm saying i can't do it Okay. Like, you know, the no, great producer. No, that's something producer. you learned about yourself along the way. Well, yeah, but I've always been like that. I mean, my taste is not, you know, um the like the kind of films I would really like to do. Once in a while they'll be and this is what we can. There is a Venn diagram overlap of what I like and what everyone, everyone would like. Likes. Uh so like Bhoot Police, which I think is a horror comedy, which is actually really really funny. At least I think it's really really funny. I hope does that. So sometimes, you know, when Lal Kaptan is offered to you, you say because of a, you actually you know you talk about freedom it's i'm not even free to say no mm-hmm. i have to say yes because of the kind of cinematic upbringing i've got because i've revered clint eastwood in the mm-hmm. dollar films of course this is not a copy of that mm-hmm. um, but it is a western and a western is basically this kind of lone swordsman very like you know yo jimbo kind of but made with the colors and the kind of uh, indian setting of what william dalrymple calls the anarchy you know that whole time when things are shifting really dangerous kind of desert uh, it's wilder than the wild west so it's it's like you can't say no to it so in that sense um there are certain subjects that i'd really want to do 
I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you really wanted to do Agent Vinod. I did. I mean, that's why you. That might have been a bit more vain than this, though. Sure. Agent sure, Vinod might have been sure. vain. It should have been a. I made a mistake, okay. and it's so easy to make mistakes. Like I read history, and people, with hindsight, are so dismissive. They say, "Ah, oh, you know, Napoleon made these mistakes." But I'm like, when you're actually there, right. it just seems like right. so those easy. are the variables in front of you. It's so easy to make a mistake. Right. But I just thought, you know, Jack Bauer from 24 or Agent. Why not an Indian agent, Vinod? But I think a mistake we made, apart from a complicated script or whatever, was there should have been an Indian character. This was a guy who was looking a little too much at the West with his dinner jacket and his mm. little suaveness, yes. suaveness. Right. He should have been like a ballpoint pen, mm. chashma wearing. Like the Family Man. No? I don't know if you. I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's fab. I've heard it's, 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 yeah. it's great. Yeah. Raj D K again. Right. Um, but it should have been something more desi. My agent for not. Did you at some point or decide to shell the film What, during its making? Like you just felt it was going out of hand. No, again, Dinesh Vijayan produced and he's very good at balancing this stuff. So what happened was, we were shooting in some heritage site mm. and doing this killer action sequence with machine guns and everything, and we needed to blow some stuff up, you know. So we said, okay, there's a couple of these structures, beautiful medieval. Temple structures? No, no, of course not. <laughs> so we said, okay, there they are, and hundred yards to the right, let's build replicas. Right. So it's part of the same complex, right. and we blow them up, you know. Yeah. So these guys were nuts. They said, you're blowing up the complex. We said, no, no, we're blowing up what we've put up. Huh. So then they stopped shooting, and then we had to redo things, and something got cancelled, and there was a lot of uh, pressure like that to scrap what we were doing, um, but. We readjusted and kind of shot another sequence somewhere else, and blah blah blah. It was tough to do, but we managed it. We weren't really thinking of shelving it ever. I've always wanted to ask you why did you name your company Illuminati? Well, I mean, know, is it, does that have anything to do with the secret society well, that no, sort of I mean, governs the world? <coughs> the conspiracy no, theory? there was just something about illumination and light, and about the fact that yeah, the Illuminati were um, a group of people, including you know. Charles, what's his name? Isaac Newton, etc., who questioned the authority of the church and uh, talked about the importance of secular knowledge. Mm -hmm. So that struggle mm -hmm. of just wanting to tell the truth and not be oppressed. Right. So it's a kind of slightly rebellious, but ultimately it's like a projector of light, mm -hmm. like Illuminati is to illuminate, and, right. and and so that's what a film projector does. And I think Johnny Depp had a production company called Nihil. Infinitum or something. Nothing's impossible. Or something. So, I just thought a cool. And I used to really look up to him when I was that age. He's been replaced by Tom Hardy now as my <laughs> kind of image. So that's why. That's what Illuminati. And was. why did you guys, uh, you and Dinesh, why did you guys uh, like part ways? Part ways. Well, basically because uh, Dinesh Vijayan is on his way to doing what he wants, which is to be, you know, a very big film producer. Right. And what I wanted was someone who's going to run my production company mm. and do stuff for me. Right. But he wants to, you know, which is fair. That's how it starts out, and people. That's why people usually leave. Sure. To do it on their own, you know. That's right. the only reason. Right. I mean, I don't really want to make films for twenty other people. I don't mind, maybe, but I don't. I, I see mean, myself. I mean, you were right. I mean, actor. in Cocktail, you were offering the lead role to other people. We did. You, yeah. I only stepped into Cocktail because nobody wanted to do it. I think Ranveer, Ranveer didn't want to do it. Imran Khan didn't want to do it, so I said, "Okay, I'll do it." They should remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're getting to yeah. the last segment, which is Sef 4.0, and Sef 4.0 is essentially, according to me, sacred games. Okay, but that's another world which is completely different from what you've done before in terms of not just performance, but in terms of the medium, in terms of the sort of script you're dealing with, in terms of. I mean, you're not even a Bollywood star there. You, at no point do you even call attention to yourself. And most people around around the world who may watch the show may not even know the body of work you have because that's so different from Sardar Singh. Yeah. Is that was that a conscious call in terms of how you would approach that part? I think it's got, definitely got a lot to do with um, Vikram Motwani. And it took me time to understand him, um, and he taught me something. Where on day one I had to investigate something in the room, and we only had about two shots, and. I said, you know, if we get this done, we're, I don't know, we're in Mud Island. <laughs> It's always painful for me to go to, distance-wise. So he <laughs> said, so on the thing, 
and uh, I had the gloves on, I was investigating the scene and I was doing it and he said, it's a cut cut and then he said, you know, first of all, bring your energy level like really, you're too hyper. Right. He said, just calm down mm. and we're going to be here all night. I said, you've got two shots. No, we're going to be here all night, I don't know, you know, just switch off mm. and just be there and this guy's like depressed, you know, so come on. So, that's one thing is to understand the energy level of your character. It's the way it was written and the whole Netflix idea and the whole thing coming together. And there was, and that's the thing about our country and our industry that all the talent is there. It's always there. It just needs a little bit of marshalling, a little right. bit of organizing and for people to just be told what, everything needs organizing, you know. Right. You do a little meet and greet with four fans and you don't tell them come from here and go from there. It will be chaos in two minutes. Everything needs hotel management as, right. it, as it were. Um, so, we had that, we had like really good technicians, Swapnil shooting, the way it was written and we are trying to do something international. In so, Motwani. in terms of performance, what you are saying is you needed to internalize that a lot more than you were used it to It was before. a different kind of communication right. than anything I had done before and it was that feeling of trusting the camera mm -hmm. and don't show what you are feeling, just feel it and it will pick it up. So, it was very different to anything and it was also reading a bit more about the art and kind of really applying something a little different to, to what we've done. It was the first show, first piece of film I'd ever worked in with that little bit of terror, the way they shoot it mm. and it kind of pulls you in slowly and then you're like, oh, hang on, this is the first thing paced, mm. the way Vikram paced it, right. made it really kind of watchable, you know, um, so it was the first thing I'd done like that. You know, uh, 25, what, 20, 27 years now that you've been in films and I've been watching a few interviews of yours lately where you always mention how you started reading up on acting yeah. in a way that you'd never done before, which is really odd yeah. because, I mean, for God's sake, is that, yeah. I mean, so is there a lot of unlearning that you're doing and, and especially for people who might be watching this who are aspiring actors, is there anything that you've read uh, that you've learned a lot from? I that tell you, you recommend? yes, uh, but before that, uh, just a bit of background yes. uh, uh, saying that you know the way we were brought up in movies. I don't know about Dilip Kumar Saab and Amitabh Bachchan, but after that, the 60s, 70s, I don't know, 50, there was a bit of a slump and also a creative slump. You know, there's a renaissance. It is onwards. Yes. Yeah, our, yeah, our kind of right. time or before that, where the the attitude was like the cool guys would be like, you know, don't talk about acting and don't yeah. talk about work and you know who learns lines and that that was the vibe right, right. that you know that's all just show up just show up and be cool or I don't know there was a it was like how we used to laugh at nerdy people in school if you try and like Amir and all were like well, you know people used to wonder why he's taking this whole thing so seriously right. there was not an artistic vibe to the profession hmm. you know it was more a uh, ho jayega, ho jayega. Yeah, and kind of like maybe there was a glamorous vibe or a kind of starry vibe, mm. but it certainly wasn't about prepping for your work or right. getting into that aspect of enjoying it, which has changed recently with all this stuff. So, I mean, there's books, I mean, you know, I can't remember the names of them, but um, there's a great book called Acting for the Camera mm. and How to Be a Good Actor, I was going to say. But really, these things of, and, and of course, you can get too technical and you need to basically just do it. Um, and there's also the 10 step acting technique by this lady called Ivana Chubuk. Uh, so, there are books where you can really practice this stuff, you get some real insights on how to break a scene down into beats mm -hmm. and how basically each line has to be said in a particular way right. and the way you say it depends on your personality in the film and right. so, you know, someone who's a certain guy will order people, will attack people, so Hunter and Lal Kaptan will growl, will menace, will threaten, will, mm -hmm. you know, attack or will kind of be like a wild animal, so those adjectives right. and then when you have the line you have to break it into how you are going to say those things. So, breaking down the script into beats and actions and actions only happen because you want something. What do you want to identify that? Oh, you know, I want you to really like me, so I charm you and I am like, well, that's a really nice haircut. Oh, I don't know, you Not know, really. yeah, <laughs> no, it is, Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. That's, right. so that kind of stuff has started happening, which I applied in a film like Bazaar or I am applying in the kind of work I'm doing now and that must be, I think I've always been a late learner, you know, so maybe if I'd applied it in the 90s, I'd be in a different place, but I don't know, it just feels that this is the time. I mean, this is the time when you were the first Bollywood star to green light, oh, well, not green light, but certainly star in a web series yeah. and now would it be correct to say that you'd said no to Homeland? No, 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 no. Uh, okay. Somebody asked me to read for it and I did. The director called me and said come down to you know LA or 
New Zealand or something where they're reading something more. And I also could have pursued it a little more aggressively, but I was kind of busy and committed here. Right. So if I'd got it easy, I would have done it. But she liked what I'd read. Hmm. And I remember Sarah helping me and a lot of people got very excited. But they took a, what you call a network actor who they're used to, right. the Asian chap. I can't remember his name. But I mean, an offer had come through for a part. It wasn't a, wasn't a great part. Okay. It wasn't like, that main lead's an Etonian. Hmm. He went to Eton. Can't have a Winchester boy doing. So he's like, isn't it, would it, would it, would Sacred Games be the first time that, say, your friends from school would have, would have actually watched your work? Yes. The, would it be the first Man, time? Good right? point. Yes. And uh, uh, that's the only thing they talk about, mm. like the English guys. And then they say things, because they're quite academic, they say things like, it's really interesting that a Muslim guy plays a Sardar in kind of like this kind of world, and that's really good contribution. It's India, you know. I'm like, that's the country, dude. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know? True. Yeah. True. Questions from the audience? So you, you spoke about the pacing of the show, uh, Sacred Games, uh, which was one of the biggest questions the audience had with the second season. You know, the pacing was questioned. Uh, what do you make of it? Because, you know, they felt it was pretty slow and, you know, there were a lot of... I didn't like the second season as much as I liked the first. The first season was some of the newest and interest, most interesting thing I'd ever seen on TV from any country. Especially Kubra and her character, Cuckoo, and frontal nudity where, you know, um, all that kind of stuff. And the, the way sex was treated and the way... Well, actually, mainly the way sex was treated between those two was something phenomenal and a love story and the way she played that. that that's what set that show into a kind of league of its own for me. But I was wondering why it's called Sacred Games. Um, and then, of course, the sacred angle came in later, which didn't hit it off with, at least, I mean, I have some assistants um, working for me who have been around in movies for 30, 40 years, you know. Um, and these guys, quite grassrooted, they said, we loved the first season, this, we lost the plot point with the guru, you know. And I think that's a common... And also the treatment of the climax with the, you know, the open ending didn't go down totally well. I liked the ending. Uh, but a lot of people ask me, what happened and, you know, why did you do that at the end? But I think the treatment of, of the guru with Gai, Gai Thonde, they wanted to think of mafia show with, with a, you know, disturbed cop angle, that kind of thing. It became a bit esoteric and slow, I think. If it was a pure print interview, it would have stopped at, I did not like Sacred Games to be. But I, you know, I didn't. I was watching it. We were in London, in England. It was my birthday and we had rented a country cottage. And there were five of us there. And this I have a really good friend of mine who's a book publisher. And he's South American and he loves internet. I mean, he speaks a bit of Hindi as well. He loves different cultures. So we opened a bottle of champagne. And we got Netflix on. And we had a glass each and we That was a up. premiere. Yeah, and that was right. the premiere. Just remember the other people were outside in the garden. They didn't even tell Karina this is what's happening. And uh, we sat to watch it. And after a while I said, okay, look, I'll watch this on my own later, you know, because... And that didn't happen with season one. So that was the difference, so I should probably say. But is, is this the end of Sartad Singh or, you know, are you... I think as far as I'm concerned, I'd like to kind of move on, unless there's a great prequel and better writing. But the excitement's done, you pull things for too many seasons, it's not that... I wish I could be as cool as Keanu Reeves, who like, didn't want to do Speed 2 also, you know? He's like, I'm done. So that's what you should be like. It's crazy how he scripted his career. I don't know, it's, yeah, amazing. it's amazing. John Wick 1 yeah. and 2 yeah. were outstanding films. True. We've been talking about uh, you being this rom-com uh, actor later in the 2000s, but recently, because it's on Netflix again, I saw Ek Haseena Thi, which is much b before all those movies, and you play the quintessential toxic boyfriend, which has become quite a thing now, thanks to, I can't say the word, what it is called, something boy, <laughs> but uh, how did you prep you for that role? What's word? the word? I mean, it, boy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you play the quintessential boy before it became... And that's very early in your career. That's 2004, I think. So, how did you prep for that? Because the first half, you're so charming. When I watched the movie, I was like, if this person tried to dupe me, I'd be duped, you know. And then you go on to become this, yeah, it's this amazing boy, which you're like, how did that happen? And that's really early. You know, Sriram Raghavan is a really interesting guy. You pretty and much found him, right? He, that was his first No, Ramu, film. Ramu. Sure. Ram Gopal sure. Verma found him. And they had done a documentary on India's first serial killer. But again, I guess having a slightly open mind, yeah. I, I kind of found that exciting. And also people have a tendency to slot you, you know. So I was doing a lot of rom-com stuff 
and uh, if you're not very good at something or people aren't sure they say you should do comedy as though it's as if that's easy easier to take yeah, you see yeah. you know but i i know what they mean that it's tough to be taken seriously yeah. you know like to deliver a line tell five people i'm going to kill you and get it if you can't pull it off then yeah. okay why don't you try comedy yeah. or why don't you do the villain's role as though these things don't require acting so i was just happy to get a chance to play something a little cooler you know and darker yeah. and interesting in terms of cinema there's this great yeah. scene he wrote where the girl and boy are sitting together and i think this is why i did it the film because the character ramu said is the kind of guy who says things and then waits to see the effect it has on you so he had written it where we say okay we both have to lie to each other so she says something asks him a question like do you love me and he says no which means yes and you know so they yeah, yeah. will you can i stay here tonight and she yeah. says yes and he's like but the game ended we said five questions this is question number 6 yeah. and she gets embarrassed and goes to the kitchen and he follows her and then they make out so i thought that's where i would like to be as an actor you know making out in the kitchen with <laughs> with urmila but you know what i mean i mean it was just dark and cool yeah. and it was that i guess i'd liked alan delon movies with this kind of doomed you know bad boy yeah yeah who's kind of like on the wrong side of the mafia and the law there's that you know uh, sean penn did it in u turn yeah. that kind of role he doesn't doesn't care about what he leaves in the in the wake in his wake of, yeah, of whatever yeah, in the wake of his yeah. thing yeah Alan Delon being the French actor in case we're getting yeah. too esoteric here. My mom's yeah. favorite. I mean one of the best looking right. guys yeah. in the world. They took him to Hollywood to become the next James Dean and he said I yeah I just cannot be bothered to learn English. <laughs> <laughs> Only the French do that. He said I can't it's too difficult and he came back. <laughs> Fantastic. We have the that. second half of Ekasinya thi do like no. it went a little berserk. It did go of, berserk. Yeah. It did go berserk. Sri Ram and I have gone berserk a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> We start off fine and then go berserk, and then he, you know, does under dun. <laughs> and that's when he doesn't call you. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Thanks, bro. So there was that. Um, it did go berserk, and they didn't know how to end it. So what Sri Ram does, and I don't mean to sell him out, um, is he paints himself into a corner, and then tries to write himself out of it, which is great, but might not always work because you're like, it's really interesting. Now, how are you going to get out of that? right mm. and then sometimes it's a bit of a disappointment how you get out because yeah. you it has to be worked out carefully but at that time the good stuff about it outweighed the first yeah, half was killer yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely killer i'm said you've often gravitated towards morally corrupt characters say being huh. cyrus or omkara or even ek hasina thi like she pointed out so do you think as an artist that gives you more room to play those characters no i don't know i think i'm just interested in those situations more than i am in like the glory of you know the the god like kind of kindness of the of the of the super white hat wearing hero or the the ram character you know it's it's also perhaps it just doesn't suit my energy you know there's some people's faces i mean like rithik roshan for example really suits like a ram like character you know even though i'm sure he's done other much various things but suits purity and kind of that kind of thing what did you play in hum saath saath hain what character was yeah you? there was Would kind of there's a krishna there was you krishna yeah, okay. yeah as a krishna it's a little <laughs> naughty version salman <laughs> was was the ram character so not something that i found it exhausting i i found hum saath saath hain possibly the, apart from lal kaptan one of the most tiring things to be so happy and and positive <laughs> all the time i mean nearly killed me it really did i'm just not like that at all so i said oh god and suraj ji used to say constantly he'd say he'd say do it your way but smile <laughs> <laughs> but you work with some crazy crazy uh, directors in in the sense of their their own idiosyncrasies right yeah. i mean it's like say uh, how different is it to work with abbas mastan from suraj barjatia well abbas mastan on um, it took me a while to figure out who's doing the talking cuz mastan bhai and i got along because the first thing he sh- uh, he shot with me i remember when he said camera aise aayega aur paise ka close up leke na phir hero pe aane ka aisa so i thought yo oh, paisa ka close up and all is this is going to be fab this movie and uh, abbas bhai kept saying kamal hai to everything <laughs> yeah, you know everything kaise <laughs> kam kamal hai kamal hai kamal and then bipasha came to say this is bipasha dress kamal hai kamal dress and i realized this is this is all he's going to say <laughs> you know so that's all i got from him <laughs> but um husain bhai was an editor right. he's the third oh, brother oh, who's nice. like unsung as much one of the best editors in the industry he 
contributed probably the most to films like Race and stuff, um, where he'd say things like, you know, don't look at him, just say the line and just grab him and bring him back, but don't look, uh, whatever, whatever. They'd start shooting at about 10 in the morning, easy peasy, mm. but 5, 6 in the evening, they say, I think we're done. And I'd be like, I love you guys, this is just the easiest <laughs> right. shoot but ever. They hate shooting at nights apparently. Yeah, they just won't. They said, can't do it. Right. You know, and then Akshay Khanna told me, he said, uh, he said, you're behaving like a star with them. I said, what do you mean? I'm not behaving like a star. He said, no, you're, you're not hugging them enough. So I said, what, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. So, he, I, so he said, um, you go and see them and hang out and give them more love. You know, it's, I'm telling you. So I said, okay. And I went tooling off to their room in the hotel Hilton in South Africa. And I saw this thing where they were, there was this white sheet on the floor of the hotel room. Mm -hmm. And they were sitting on it and they had their whiskey and their peanuts <laughs> and they were all sitting there and they said, you know, come and join us. So I sat there for a bit and then I said, you know, I, and we had a chat and they said, listen, you don't have to sit with us, you don't have to hug us, you don't have to do anything, just turn up and do your bit. <laughs> you know, we don't expect anything from you and that was a great relief. And we got along really well after that. And Suraji, I remember Salman saying, when he's doing his makeup, because we were all like, this is the biggest film in India when we did Hamsat Satra right. after Hum Aapke Hain yeah, Kwan exactly. Kwan Everyone's like, I remember the amount of people that came to see him on the set and touched his feet, you know, everyone from the top heroine to struggling actresses. They all trooped in, Suraji, you know, and with the most charming and, uh, and I thought, set. man, I want to be like, to say hi, like, just to say hi and right. any chance of the next movie sure. and you know, hello. Kwan, right? And all hitting it like in the most charming way. Right. I remember Rekha ji coming to see him, oh, wow. like how senior, you know, wow. so he, that's like power and then distributors throwing themselves at their feet on the set saying, when's your film coming, my theatres, you know, we're running out of money, it's like a drought out there, we're waiting for something, please right. guys, they were like the princes of the film industry right. in that sense. I remember Salman saying, Suraj, you think you're going to give a hat trick this time? It's quite rare. And I thought, God, who talks to him like that? You know, <laughs> I mean, and all of us were like <laughs> revering him. And here yeah, this comment came, I remember. But that way you've seen, you've seen like series, you could do a It was like, the, the difference between them, one was like Hindu, family, Amar Chitra Katha meets social, like the ultimate in family bonding culture. And it's like an epic happening, it's like a version of the Ramayana. The whole family itself. Huh. Yeah. I, and the, what they're shooting. Right. And that atmosphere. And the other one is, you know, brother sleeping with sister and I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Some kind of incestuous pervy, which is actually great for our country that, you know, both films can be hits. Right. So it's not actually as judgmental as people make out, right? I, I think you have to offset one with the other. Sure. They're different sides of a coin, right? Abbas Mastan and the Rajris. I can't, I can't imagine Suraj Barjatia and, and the brothers sitting on the floor with booze and no. Chakna no. in the center, no, right? No, but definitely around the table yeah. uh, or, you know, eating, drink, eating together. I don't think there's any drinking Impossible. There. No, yeah. impossible. I guess you're playing a politician for the first time in Tanda, if yes. I'm not wrong. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about it? Well, I mean, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an Amazon show and it's Ali Abbas and it's got some massive scale to it and it's set That's in Delhi. New series. Yeah, new okay. series. So it's on politics and it's like, I don't want to use American examples, but it's kind of house of cardsy, mm -hmm. you know, um, in that sense. But it's in and Indian politics is is quite a tradition. I mean, it's like we have our own stories to tell about that kind of thing. Um, so it's quite relatable and it's really exciting. And as you could imagine, it's quite Chanakya like in the guise of a you know young, um, well not necessarily young, but like a um, youth leader threatening to become prime minister and like from a privileged kind of background uh, dynastic political family who's a Machiavellian kind of dude is my role but then there's all these various factions of you know Dalit politics and UP cops and like the whole nexus and mix between how the whole thing runs which is you know quite a story. Uh, Seth you never shied away from giving an opinion on something that you had directly asked a question on. Uh, what I found slightly surprising was when Me Too happened, I don't think I heard a word from you on that subject. No, One, but there were so many words. Huh? There were? Yeah. I'll tell you why I'm asking this question. Because I never shied your away. Own, the, the head of your own uh, management company yeah. was accused of Me Too as well. Yeah. Uh, did you say anything on that subject back then or was that something that you thought 
No, we, I said something uh, like a, a lot of things that, you know, I've never ever, all the kind of things one might have done is manipulate. I mean, it's disgusting to manipulate women or to make the workplace hostile right. or any of these things. And whatever's happening is, is really good in the way that people should. I mean, I said all these things many, sure. many times that in full support of the women and um, there's two sides to it. I don't think there's any smoke without fire, but you know, sometimes they have to come forward and you have to have, we have to support these women to actually say, because there's a fear, no, that if a guy's career can also be destroyed without any proof, without any kind of, so there's two things. I mean, initially everybody is reacting saying, whoever says anything, you know, just take the guy out and, you know, chuck him out or destroy him. And if, and that does make the environment safe and it improves and everyone. And one thing that's happened is people will think 10 times before behaving like that again. I think there's already a change right. has, has happened. Um, but an anonymous accusation and people saying things is also a dangerous situation because, you know, you've got to be a little sure before you destroy somebody in some way. And also, unfortunately or fortunately, whether it's a sign of our culture, we take down one or two juicy targets. Mm -hmm which nobody really minds taking down. Well, the big boys, nobody touches. Right. So I don't know how civilized that is also. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I don't think these are the only people. Right. Um, you and if you've probably seen a lot. I don't know, but if they're doing it, I'm, I'm sure it goes all the way yeah. pretty high up, right. whether it's in politics or whether it's in, in movies or where, wherever right. it is. We are aware that there's certain powerful people in a strata which cannot be touched mm. in this country. And uh, so making an example out of one or two, I mean, it, if it makes the environment safer, it's great. Um, but, you know, we should be aware of all these things. Saif Ali Khan, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah. This was great fun. Thank you. Thank you. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.